It is Tuesday and time for your favorite YouTube show, Heard Online, a series of videos where you take a critical look at claims made on the World Wide Web to see if they are true or they are false. And today I am super, super happy. I actually came across an article that just made me feel all warm and bubble inside, filled with hope, such hope as, I, as I've never had before. I believe that we actually have a chance at making that dent in the sleep universe. Maybe we can actually do that. And uh, yeah, so I'm really, really happy about this. And uh, I'll share with you why in a second, of course. But uh, just a quick, quick backstory. Yesterday, I was just minding my business and I saw a, a DM from a, a direct message uh, uh, on Instagram from, from one of our uh, one of our one of the members of our, of our community here, Paul, who said, "Hey, the Guardian actually had something nice to say about sleep," and uh, that made me uh, curious. So I um, I headed over to the Guardian, and uh, what do I see? Well, I saw an article titled "Want to Get a Good Night's Sleep." First of all, stop trying. Seeing that was like, wow, this is different. Almost like it's almost shocking when you see something so different in you know mainstream media, and that made me really curious. So the next the next place my eyes went was like, okay, who wrote this? And what I see, Camilla Stoddard wrote the article, and that's when I really started smiling. And you know, you may be like, why did you start? Why did you smile so much when you saw that? Well, I'm about to share you exactly why that happened. And we're going to head over to our own alumni page. And guess who's there? Camilla is there. Camilla is actually one of our own sleep coaches. She's actually the first ever uh, coach to certify through our uh, our program. So I was just so glad to see that, um, you know, that she got published in, in The Guardian. I was happy for her, happy for the movement. And she had actually mentioned this, uh, you know, in retrospect, I remember that she was working on a, um, an article in The Guardian but I, um, you know, I forgot about it. Forgot about it, for, forgot about it until I actually saw it. So, yeah, super happy about that. And now let's take a look at this article where uh, Camilla goes over like seven, seven tips, seven, seven insights that can help anyone who's had trouble sleeping. And um, as you know, we will start, of course, with our trigrometer. Uh, so we rate from zero to five. The or the uh, the title of an article. Zero is not triggering at all, and five is the most triggering. Want to get a good night's sleep? First of all, stop trying. To me, this is a zero or maybe a minus five, not triggering at all. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, reassuring headline, uh, you know, intended to really educate and um, and uh, and help someone who reads it. Now, um, now let's let's jump in here. So she's uh, saying, oh, the intro here says seven expert and unexpected tips for people who have already tried everything. And then Camilla says, as a sleep coach, I regularly meet people who have tried everything to get more sleep. They have read every article on the subject and devoured every tip on the internet and then adjusted and readjusted their routines based on the advice they have found. Many of them are doing all the right things, spending time winding down before bed, curbing screen time, meditating, but still they struggle. The problem is that when it comes to sleep, unlike most every other area of life, effort is not rewarded. In fact, it is actually punished. The more you try, the less you're likely to succeed. And this, this first paragraph is like maybe the you know most insightful thing that has been written in mainstream media about sleep ever in the history of humanity. I don't know, but it's beautiful. And uh, I, I think it's kind of like, when I was reading this, I was thinking, I hope people who come across this realize how like fresh and different this is. And people aren't like, oh, yeah, well, what are those seven tips? OK, I've heard them before, like blah, blah, blah. Maybe some people will, but I hope at least uh, I hope at least a bunch of people really read this, kind of ponder it, reflect on it and see how fresh this is. Let's keep reading. Uh, this is because sleep is a passive process like breathing or digesting, it cannot be controlled and nothing we can do can force it to happen. If we can stop trying, sleep will naturally follow. But not trying to sleep is extremely hard, especially when you're exhausted and desperate. That sentence I thought was so insightful as well and so nice to read because it acknowledges that what we as sleep coaches are asking is very difficult and paradoxical. It's basically like someone who's like, you know, really hungry saying like, try less to, to eat, you know, it, it's very, very paradoxical. 
uh, and, and acknowledging that it is not easy, I think actually makes it easier. When we say this should be easy, then it's hard, but we see this is really difficult. That actually can be, can be really helpful and make it a little easier. So loved reading that one. And then let's keep going. Instead, I get my clients to shift their attention towards the main causes of sleeplessness, lack of sleep drive and hyper arousal. Tackling these two factors, which happily respond very well to a bit of effort, can then create the right conditions to allow to sleep happen all on its own. And so here, Camilla introduces the gas and brake model uh, and, um, you know, and simplifies things very, very much. Like, you know, either we don't sleep because we don't have sleep drive or because we are hyper aroused. And I think she also does it so well when she's kind of a little bit tongue in cheek here says, you know, they happily respond to a bit of effort. And, and this is another paradox that, yes, sometimes we need a little bit of effort to arrive where there's no effort. We need to educate ourselves to see that we need no further education or we need to understand that there's nothing to understand. You know, it's a little, it's, it's a paradox there, but it's, it's, it's true. I believe that oftentimes we need a little bit of effort to arrive where we want to be. Let's keep reading. Then Camilla says, the more scientifically sound advice addresses these factors too, but it also unintentionally gives the false impression that you're able to make yourself sleep by doing certain things. And so creates this frustrating cycle that is difficult to break. I think in that sentence, the way I read this is Camilla saying, okay, in the traditional realm within CBTI, if you look closely, this understanding exists there, but the, the way it is taught gives people the impression that sleep can be controlled, which is unfortunate. And I think this is a very nice and kind way of expressing things. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm a little bit more like, I, I, I'm a little bit more critical, I think, when I express this, but I think this was, you know, beautifully said by Camilla. Um, she says, insomnia is like a Chinese finger trap, which grips tighter the more you try to pull your fingers away. The only way out of the trap is to go against your in instinct and push. Sometimes you have to do things differently to get a different outcome. Here are seven ways to improve your sleep that might just work as long as you don't try too hard. Very nice little twist there too. All right, so first one out of seven is give up trying to sleep tonight. Camilla says, as brutal as it sounds, there's nothing you can do between now and bedtime to guarantee that you'll sleep tonight. There is, however, plenty you can start doing to improve your chances of sleeping well next month. It takes time to optimize your sleep drive and reduce hyperarousal, and there are no quick fixes. So instead of worrying about the night ahead, make sleeping well a long-term goal and expect to see progress in a few weeks rather than tomorrow, which I think, of course, is very helpful if we expect to see something like I, I expect to sleep this way tonight so much pressure anticipation and that's tricky versus when we have like you know sometime in the future i believe sleep will happen easier but i'm not going to focus on that tonight that's much more helpful and um i do think um you know reading this uh you know i'm also reminded that uh you know as sleep coaches, we have a little bit, you know, e even though we've, we're all like, you know, certified through the sleep coach school, we have like the same core philosophy. We also see things a little bit differently. I think um, uh, this, what Camilla said here reminds me a little bit of like Coach Joseph, who um, focuses a bit, a bit more on like sleep drive and, 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 and working on things there, which, which I don't focus so much on. Uh, but I think diversity is very, very helpful. Like it, it's, it's so nice to, to, um, you know, find a, a variation of the teaching that suits, uh, that suits you or, you know, people out there. So yeah, I think when we try to optimize sleep drive, I think that's tricky. It can lead to effort. And I think insomnia really is about hyper arousal. So I focus much, much on that, but you know, with that said, I think this was, this was nicely said. Um, then the second one is breathe less. And Camilla says that there's some evidence that if we slow down our breathing from our regular 12 to 20 per minute to four or five breaths per, per minute, we engage the parasympathetic nerve system, which counteracts hyper arousal. And this to me, this is a tricky one to me because on one hand, like to me, this can lead us to think in like the uh, kind of at a level that's not so helpful when we think at like, okay, my hyper arousal comes from you know, the activity at, uh, in my sympathetic nervous system, therefore I need to counteract that at the level of the parasympathetic nervous system, which I, I think is not as helpful as thinking in more like big picture that um, it's my kind of 
overall how I think about this affects how I feel that the sort of big picture, rather looking at the specific like neuro neurotransmitters or hormones and things like that, that can that can be quite tricky, I think. Uh, and to comment on the breathing, I think that if we slow down our breathing purposefully to be more present, to be more okay with whatever emotion we have in the moment, uh, that's sort of like meditation or, or mindfulness or just, you know, it, it can be a nice thing, but it can easily lead to like, oh, I'm down to six breaths per minute, but I'm still not feeling any more calm. Like, why isn't this? It can, still, it can lead to effort. So a little bit tricky, that one. Um, but, uh, you know, again, with the right understanding, everything it can be helpful. Okay, let's keep reading. Have a late night. Um, it comes up now. And uh, Camilla says, the only thing that generates sleep drive is being awake and that adults need to be awake at least 16 hours to gener generate enough sleep drive for eight hours at night, which, uh, you know, I think what's so helpful here is, uh, you know, presenting this education that the only thing that makes us sleep is actually staying awake. Wakefulness is the only thing that produces sleep because it reduces so much confusion. Uh, but a little bit tricky also when we, when we introduce numbers. Uh, I do believe that overall, when we go from like uh, spending like, you know, 10 hours in bed, trying to sleep to like reducing that and just enjoying our wakefulness more, that helps. Numbers are a little tricky, but the overall teaching I think is very helpful. And now she says, wind up your wind down routine. And I love this one. Uh, she makes the case that, uh, you know, you may have had a, an elaborate wind down routine that takes you your whole evening uh, but maybe you're not even enjoying it, you know? Uh, and so maybe like winding it up, you know, spicing it up, like doing something you actually enjoy, you look forward to, it can be so helpful when we go from thinking like, okay, I'm going to get in the right mindset mood, uh, so that I can sleep. That's basically all effort when it's, but when it becomes like, okay, I'm going to actually do something I enjoy for, for no other reason it takes us away from, from effort. So I think this is a really nice one. And then she says, embrace being awake. Uh, which I'm not going to go into detail uh, uh, about because really this is you know a variation of what we call befriending wakefulness, which is one of our core concepts and teachings. And uh, then she says, smile more. And you know, to me, also a little tricky. Like I, I think uh, if we just like okay, I'm going to smile so that I become more happy. A little tricky, but if we just smile more and we find that oh that's nice, no problem there. And then finally, stop reading articles about sleep. Colin Espy, professor of sleep medicine at Oxford University, defines insomnia as preoccupation with sleep. And then uh, she says, um, but none of researching, monitoring, or analyzing actually leads to better sleep. In fact, constantly looking for the solution undoubtedly makes things worse. And, uh, you know, to me, like, it's, uh, you know, I should put it. You know, she, she, she quotes somebody who is, like, well-established in sort of the traditional uh, you know, traditional academia. And, and I think a lot of the reasons we have a lot of pondering and researching and analyzing is actually from the work that comes from academia. So I think in a way, Camilla gives credit where, you know, maybe the credit is more with, with, with her than with anyone else. Uh, I, I, but I don't know, maybe Colin S.B. would just like totally agree with this and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, has not contributed at all to any confusion in the field. What do I know? I don't know too much of Kolansky's work, although I know the name, of course. Um, so with that said, yeah, wonderful article uh, uh, and uh, really, really hopeful today and optimistic and seeing that maybe maybe we can actually reach the masses and, and make a dent in the sleep universe. Uh, so yeah, that was Heard Online for today. Hope you enjoyed it and, and had some takeaway. I'll link to the um, article in the description, of course. and. Um, if you're finding your way to where you want to be, thanks to Heard Online and all the other content we have here, that is amazing. Please share uh, share that with us. Uh, on the other side, on the other end, if you find things are tricky, you would like some more support, guidance on your path to where you want to be, where sleep happens easily, you're, uh, you feel like yourself again, and then, and then please head over to our website, thesleepcoachschool.com, and you can find coaching options that I hope will suit you perfectly. And if you decide to join, and we look forward to seeing you on the other side. With that said, I uh, hope you have a super nice rest of your day and look forward to having you back soon. Bye for now.